landscape photography, but it's more focused on commercial uh, clients, I guess. I, uh, when I was working in animation, I was paid for this in my job, uh, you know, in animation. The landscape, anything. And I realized after a few months that they were not selling. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Um, so I understand that you had a pretty influential experience. Uh, sorry for a little bit of hustle and bustle, but <laughs> I'm panicking. I'm not panicking, but as you, you can't really tell, but behind me, um, the sun is rising and it's, the light is creeping down the trees. I found a really nice section of trees, uh, which I never intended on shooting. I'm here on like a scouting mission uh, for a workshop, um, and i seen it, I knew it'd be good. Well, I thought it might be good, hence the reason why I'm taking it. But I don't actually know, if you know what I mean. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a spur of the moment shot. Um, so yeah, and there's lots of hares and wildlife about at the moment. It's very frosty. Um, I think it was about minus four this morning here in Wiltshire, so. Pretty nippy, I haven't even had a chance, I've still got me a uh, Still got me running, my running trainers on. I haven't even got my boots on yet, and I have parked on the side of the um, the track into the woods. Very, very peaceful. Right, let's get this shot set up. Let's see if we can capture that frost on the on the, on the branches. And some warm light hitting it. Should be, should be good. Should be good. Well. As you see by my face, it is very bright now, very harsh, and the reason I'm still here is because I'm struggling with this lens. Um, I'm right out of 400 mil, and I don't know whether to shoot. And it's quite a busy scene. I don't know whether to shoot f16. Um, that sort of. 100, uh, 200, the longer end of 200 I would have shot f16. I think with the compression and the depth of field being so squat, um, bang out of 400mm, so hard to get uh, everything in sharp focus, the depth of field is so squat. Um, so I'm sort of toying, this is only the second time I bought, bought this lens out, um, it's only this real second time I've had proper go at shooting at the longer end of this lens and if it isn't like shooting hairs and things uh, so woodland with this at the right of the long end is incredibly hard to shoot and uh, <laughs> turning the, stabiliz the stabilization off and on trying to sh slightly higher shut speed focus on different areas um, so yeah who knows whether I'll get a sharp image or an image that's acceptably sharp But yeah, the scene is so harsh right now and I think it's time, I think it's time we moved on. I know it doesn't look like much, but this place is really, can be really special. Um, 
as you can see there's lots of bluebells dotted around this pond and it's just like it is just a just a pond <laughs> um, the muddy pond but honestly when this place is this is a place I tend to come back to when uh, when when it's all overgrown and you get quite a lot of shelter because um, there's obviously water you get, tend to get a bit of atmosphere I th I'm guessing what I, my aim for this year is to try and shoot this area late summer uh, sort of early autumn when there's still sort of um, a lot of co uh, cover from the trees but a bit more colour rather than just green yeah, I don't know whether there might be some opportunities. I'm just have a quick walk around here and just see if uh, if there is anything I can shoot, maybe more intimate with a longer lens, like we did last week. Who knows? Let's have a let's have a look at some nice pond weed and some nice light. So maybe we might be able to pick something out. So I'm just going to look for all, um, intimate scenes. I think 100 to 400 on. Um, I like some of these mosses and some of the light that's happening down here. Uh, I'm just going to open up my aperture. As wide as it will go, so I can keep that shutter speed up. Whether you can pick, it's just whether you can pick a spot out. Um, I like this patch down here, um, but it's not, it's not very big. Uh, it's got quite a lot of glare on the scene as well. I'm going to keep walking around and um, I haven't got you watching me <laughs> and just see if I can pick something out. Um, it's not looking very good I must admit it's uh, slim pickings at the moment this time of year. Quite a nice little weird scene here. <laughs> I say weird because well it's unusual, I don't think you really gonna know if you haven't watched the video what it will be. Um, obviously you can make out that it's on water and get a rough idea of what it is, but this is the hard bit. I'm trying to find oh. Trying to find a level base in a swamp. It's gonna stink. <laughs> so I think I've found a wonderful, weird image and I've already taken it. Um, I have focus stacked it but I want, what I want to do now is just take you into the A7R4 and just video and talk a little bit about why <laughs> if I can explain. So um, let's jump over to the actual image shall we? So here, here you go, here's my shot. Um, I like the way Obviously the contrast in colour, you've got that sort of lime green against the dark water and I am shooting this around a stop under. Um, one, I don't want to blow any highlights, although the light is very soft and diffused. Two, the Sony's tend to, I, I believe the light meter tends to um, build, I don't know how to say it, but anyway, if I shoot at zero, like my light meter tells me, sometimes I find myself lots of times and my highlights, specular highlights, get really blown out. Um, so what I tend to do is kind of ignore the light meter, but I normally shoot around a stop under, always monitoring my um, histogram. Anyway, back into back into the shot. You can see I love the way the bubbles are. I love the way it's composed. The eye sort of gets drawn around the bottom, up to the middle, up to the top left, and then diagonally across to the top right. That's how I that's how I look at this image anyway. And the way that the light is just coming in from the top right hand side, just bleeding across and lighting up them bubbles. Um 
is what really drew me. I really wish that that, I think it's like a slug or a snail, wasn't there. And maybe that even that little um, flower wasn't there as well. Um, I really can't pick something out that's really clean. As you can imagine, and as you can see from this image here, this scene, it's a very messy scene. Uh, if I, let me just zoom out for you, bear with me. If I just zoom out, you can see how messy it is all around here. Um, and even, you know, some of this around here, you can see a lot of these twigs underneath and it's quite messy. Whereas I'm hoping you can kind of see why I picked this area here. One, the light is coming in across, and two, you've got contrast. It's quite sort of dark and deep around here. Um, so the, the greens go from more of a lime green to sort of a, um, a popping sort of candy green, shall we say. So yeah, that's, that's my reasons. I'm bang right out at 400 mil, and I am having to focus stack. Let me just zoom out again, sorry. I'm having to focus stack in and around here and then on the snail and the petal and then at the top here. So I'm taking four or maybe even five images F16 just to make sure I'm getting all this nice and sharp. So I hope that explains why I'm taking this image. Um, <laughs> I'm going for a phase at the moment. Uh, maybe it's just fact that I've got the uh, the big lens but it's just opens up a whole new ball game um, and experiences and opportunities um, and I think these sorts of things look quite nice um, sort of thing that edited well maybe even a bit cleaner than I've got it you know you could imagine seeing it in, in, a, in a big art gallery so it might seem a bit strange to come to the woods and shoot something like this but <coughs> sorry you got a you got to broaden your horizons and uh, look for new things. Right, onwards and upwards. Well, we've kind of reached my main goal for this week's, this well, this morning shoot was to scout these bluebells, and they are everywhere. Um, not as a surprise, this woods is absolutely famous. I've spoke to photographers from Scotland, Snowdonia, in the south of the UK, back down in Cornwall, um, and I've got a couple of clients that are interested in doing bluebell work, and this is a good, this is the best place, in my opinion, for, for hundreds of miles. Um, and it will be absolutely rammed. So it's important to do scouting. It's important to, I tend to stick away. Um, I'm a nature first ambassador uh, here in the UK, so I will not be walking on them, um, you know, because we all know reasons why. Uh, so it has to be done properly. Uh, I do believe you can do workshops in areas on the blue bounds. You just have to, you just be mindful um, and think long term, you know, this is every year we want this to come back, so. So yeah, bluebells. I'm scouting for bluebells. Um, the daffodils are out, which is really nice. Um, maybe it's like past their best, then one's over there. But uh, that is still nice to see. And the wildflowers are all out as well. So uh, spring is definitely here. 100% it is here and it is coming. Um, other than the frosty mornings still. We don't really know. We're in winter here in Wiltshire. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed my images. Um, I will show Obviously the, uh, the green slime shot from the pond. <laughs> I think that will turn out quite well, actually. I do, I have faith. Fingers crossed, I've got faith. Um, and I will show a little slideshow of some of my best images from this Bluebell Woods. Um, just so you can get a gist of what this woods looks like uh, when the Bluebells are at their best. And if you are interested in the Bluebell Workshop or Woodland Workshop, or you wanna go and shoot some seascapes over in Dorset or Cornwall, um, I know them areas really well, um, obviously being from Cornwall originally. Uh, so yeah, head over to my website, I'll put a link up here and down below. And uh, you better get all the details for a workshop with this one maximum of three people. Um, so yeah, head over to there for all the details. Right, 
Um, before I, before we do go, I just want to talk a little bit about gear. <laughs> People are going, oh no, or they've just left. But I want to talk about these just quickly. Um, I am going to do a separate video for these and I'm writing a blog article about these Valorette um, Markov version 3s. I have some Milfords as well, which have a, they're, they're like a merino wall with a outer waterproof layer. Um, so they're waterproof, whereas these ain't just sort of, just sort of weatherproof really. Um, but yeah, hopefully that'll focus. These are the Markov version 3s. They're really smart and I am going to do, like I said, a blog. So there will be some details about these, but I've found that from frosty mornings, they're just absolutely perfect. Um, the Milfords are nice as well because the merino wool, if it's not windy, then the Milfords are really good. But I find these amazing and you can see here, uh, if it will focus, please focus. Yes, uh, you can see that the finger and f um, the forefinger and thumb are out. Got a little pop there, pocket there, we can put hand warmers in, and there's a little uh, tripod key in there as well. In one of them, they're just they're really well made. There's a nice bit of grip on them. You can see the grip. They just they they really have transformed my style of shooting, um, and I can't thank Valorant enough for sending me them. Um, and I also have a pair of hatchets as well, which are for really sort of slightly harsher conditions. So yeah. That's my little gear bit done. I will be doing a separate little video to go with the blog article about these so you can get more uh, more information on them. Um, but yeah, really enjoying the Valorette gloves. Really, really good. Right, I am going to shoot off, get some breakfast, and I will see you next week. Enjoy the slideshow of the blue bows and the green slime shot. <laughs> Ciao, bye for now. <laughs>